Hi Cornerstone. Well, this is the week of Thanksgiving and this is a Thanksgiving unlike any we have seen. And many of us are separated from the ones we were counting on spending Thanksgiving with, with um, our loved ones. And we're separated. We're not able to be together. And this is frustrating. And we just mark it up as another disappointment in 2020. But we've got a, a choice here, don't we? The choice is this. We can either grumble or we can have gratitude. We can grab hold of gratitude. It's grumble or gratitude. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at what does it mean for us to have a grateful heart, to be thankful. And I came across this. This is from a theologian and pastor in the 13th century, and he writes this. He says, if the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. If the only prayer you pray in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. Now, that's probably an oversimplification, but when we encounter the grace of God, when we encounter a relationship with Him, thank you is enough. That's what moves us and draws us deeper into the heart of God as we've looked at over the last couple weeks in these devotionals. But I want to read a story that highlights this perfectly. It comes from the Gospel of Luke. It's Luke 17, beginning at verse 11. Now on His way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee, As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance, talk about social distancing, and there they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice, and he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. This is a big deal. Jesus asked, We're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. I love this story for so many reasons, but here these men are said that they're going to be cleansed. And before they are, they start walking in faith to the priests. And then they're looking at themselves. They're looking at their skin and suddenly their skin begins to heal. And there they are, they're cleansed in that moment. And they're so enamored by this and taken by this, but their focus is so narrow. They're only noticing themselves, except for this one Samaritan, the one who's the outcast, the one who's been marginalized. Not only does he see his healing, that his skin is made pure, but he actually begins to realize the one who did it. He begins to see the one who is behind what happened to him. And he can't help himself, but he runs back to Jesus. And there he throws himself before Jesus in gratitude. And he worships. He's filled with worship because he sees who Jesus is. He sees the power of Jesus. And watch this. What he sees most is the grace of Jesus. He knows that he doesn't deserve this. And he comes to Jesus to praise him, to thank him. And here's what we learn is that grace transforms our grumble into gratitude. When we experience grace, knowing that we don't deserve what we have, when we see the grace of God in our lives, it comes and it transforms our grumble into gratitude. And so let us go into Thanksgiving this week with that perspective, not like the other nine men who are just so enamored with what's going on in their own lives, but like this one man who begins to see the one who's behind everything, the one who gives us and lavishes on us his grace. And so that's my encouragement for us. I get it. It's hard. It's really hard to do this. This is a struggle. There's been so many disappointments and there's so much we could truly grumble about. But God's inviting us deeper. He's calling us to grab hold of who he is and to remember his grace. And here's the deal. This week, we're going to be starting our Advent series, The Love of Christmas. I can't think of a better topic for us to be spending in these weeks of Advent than the topic of God's love, a love that is fierce, a love that comes at us and that actually makes us whole again. And so if you're struggling with grumbling, if you're struggling with all the disappointments around us, join us either online or join us in person. But join us as we together dive deep into the love of Christmas. And so here's what I want to say. I'm so grateful for you, Cornerstone. I'm grateful for this body of believers that God has put together. I'm grateful for our lead pastor, for Sheldon. He has loved and led well. 
He leads us well. And as many of you know, his family needs prayer. His daughter, Ashley, needs prayer. She has a serious illness. And want to invite you just to continue to be praying for her that God would work out his purposes, that God would bring healing. And so would you do that? Would you be praying for them? But again, I'm grateful for you. And I know many of you are struggling with your own illness. And I want you to know we are praying for you. We are praying for your wholeness, your healing, that God would meet you where you are right now because he's a God who is with us. Let us hold on to that as we head into this Advent season. So all of that said, happy Thanksgiving. Let me end with these words from Psalm 107. It's this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen.